So why is technical architecture so important? If you're a techie, it's obvious. But if you're a business person, should you really care about the architecture at all? Ultimately, architecture is the blueprint for the technical delivery of business goals and ambitions. And it's important for the technologists, the business people, and the financial people to be considered in that blueprint within that architecture. This video will discuss what I believe are the seven key reasons why technical architecture is so important to deliver systems and platforms that meet the key business goals and business ambitions. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the reasons why architecture is so important. So reason number one, architectures provide a way to articulate and communicate how a system or platform can deliver the requirements of a business. The best example I have of this is when I was in a pitch to a customer to do a site redesign and a replatform. I was part of the sales team in a small compact room with a bunch of customers in front of us and the CEO said that he had a hard deadline because he had to take a flight. So my piece was scheduled to the end of the meeting and I was going to present this amazing new architecture. So I'm waiting for my turn and the customer's getting really excited by the new web design, by the web strategy, by all of the detailed UX requirements. And I was sitting there concerned that I wouldn't actually get time to talk about the technology part of the platform. Then just when I was starting to worry about running out of time, the CEO of the customer turns to me and says, John, you got five minutes, now blow me away. My presentation had seven slides and I knew I didn't have time to go through those seven slides within that five minutes. So what I did is I brought up the first slide and showed them how their current architecture looked. And then I passed all the slides to the very end to the target architecture and give a quick summary review of all the key points that I want to make. So at this point I had a minute left. I turned to the CEO and said, your current architecture is a little bit like a small house. And what you need is a multi-story building. And you can't build a multi-story building on the foundations of a small house. And this is why this new target architecture is the right architecture to take you forward. And he stopped. He looked at me and said, good, I've got it. Let's go with that. And this is one of the most important strengths of technical architecture. It's ability to abstract complex technology and business requirements into a set of easy to understand models that almost any stakeholder can get regardless of their technology skills and knowledge. Reason number two, architecture design provides clarity on a complex system by understanding the structure, the composition and the components within that system. At the heart of designing an architecture is functional or problem decomposition, which really provides clarity on which component or subsystem owns which piece of functionality. The architecture also defines the boundaries of these components and subsystems. It also details the communications and interactions of these components throughout the entire system. And it identifies all of the dependencies and interdependencies between all of the system components. It ultimately can create a blueprint for developers to collaborate around when they're developing these systems. Reason number three, ensure the system meets its environmental requirements and quality constraints. So what does this really mean? If we go back to our house analogy, the function requirements are all the things like the walls, the units, the floor, the ceiling, the fixtures, the fittings, the windows, even the furniture. It's everything that you need and want to live in that house. The function requirements are the frame of the house, the thing that gives it structure, shape, integrity and strength. It's not part of the functional things you'd use in a house, but you need it to hold the house together. Architectural non-functional requirements are the same as the frame in the house. These are typically things like, how does the system need to scale? How reliable does the system need to be? What's the level of availability for this system? And how well does the system need to perform? These non-functional requirements often start to form the service level agreement. And that's why it's really important to include them in the architecture early on. One of the most important factors you need to consider in a technical architecture for almost any system 
is that of security. And it's in the architectural stage where you can really start to think about the defensive measures you need to put in place to make sure the system is safe and secure. Reason number four, managed and considered architectures can have a much lower total cost of ownership. Well thought through architectures can have much lower costs than those architectures that are accidental. But why is that? And what does total cost of ownership really mean? I like to group total cost of ownership into four buckets. Cost of hardware, software and services. These are the things that you buy, like licenses. Cost to run the system. These are energy, hosting and people costs just to keep the thing going. The cost of supporting and maintaining the system. These are things like patches, bug fixing, cycling out servers, replacing components, those kinds of things. And then you have the cost of change. And in this bucket, you've got your major upgrades, you've got your ongoing development and any migrations that you need. Reason number five, the choice of architecture or architecture design can actually reduce the risk on development projects. Just choosing some really cool tech and let your developers at it sounds really tempting because you just want to get things done. But what that can really lead to is a lot of rework. And the reason why this can happen is that as systems become more and more complex, it's really difficult for a developer to hold the entire system in the head, all of the components, all of the communications between those components and all of the dependencies. And if you have multiple teams of developers, the likelihood of each developer holding the same model in their head and all of those dependencies and all of those communications is probably not gonna happen. And this is how architecture can help de-risk projects because it gives you a consistent model that developers can collaborate around. It can help developers find gaps in the architecture and issues like bottlenecks ahead of time. It can help them to identify security holes. It can help teams become more accurate with estimations and making planning much simpler. It can also inform teams on the relevant frameworks, standards, and tools they might need to use for that system. Reason number six, the right architecture can enable more agility in future development and also give you greater flexibility in extending the system. It's not very often in my career that I've actually seen a software system developed, delivered, and then left alone. There are so many reasons why a platform will continue to need development post-launch. It may be the first phase in a series of phase developments. It may be it's an MVP and there's more iterative development. You may need to strangle out other systems out of a legacy platform. It may be that the business needs to keep moving, adapting and innovating to keep ahead of its competitors. Today, more than ever, the increased speed in change is forcing businesses to be more rapid, to be more nimble and to be more agile when it comes to their systems development. The type of architectural choices can have a major impact on how easy the system can be extended. And that's one of the main reasons why Mac architecture is gaining so much popularity. It's also the reason why composable systems are becoming ever so important. Reason number seven, architecture can instill a vision of the future and drive technical strategy. In many cases, an architectural model is used to articulate the future state or vision of a technology platform that can ultimately deliver the ambitions of a business. In the cases of migrating from a legacy platform to a new modern platform, the future architecture is compared to the current or existing architecture to basically build the roadmap for change and identify all of the approaches to that change. There is a case where the business goal itself is so radical that the architecture has to basically capture the goals of the business and then provide an ongoing basis for a technical strategy that will achieve the actual business ambitions. The technical architecture can be a guiding light for technology decisions and be a north star for the technical strategy. There are so many reasons why getting the architecture right is important and critical for delivering platforms that ultimately deliver the aspirations and the ambitions of a business. It does not mean that you should spend months and months trying to create the most perfect architecture before you even write a line of code. Because there's never a perfect architecture. Each project and each situation is different and every time it's constantly changing. Ralph E. Johnson a famous computer scientist couldn't have put it better by saying, architecture is about important stuff, 
whatever that is. So if you like this video, can you just spend a little bit of time and press that like button so this video can be shared with many others. If you're really interested in this subject around architecture and modern architectures and how it fits in business and e-commerce at a high level, why don't you subscribe to this channel? I spend a lot of time trying to pull these videos together and make sure that it's right for not necessarily developers, but everybody out there who's trying to understand what all of these things mean in the world and what are all those mad techies trying to do. It's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.